In this video, I'm going to be breaking down how I utilize Photoshop's new generative AI fill feature to retouch my real estate photography images on the daily, speed up my workflow, and how you can do the same. Let's get into it right now. So essentially, Generative Fill is a new AI-powered feature in Photoshop where wherever you make a selection, you can give it a prompt to generate something completely from AI. So a lot of benefits from like removing things, creating things, and especially really utilizing it for digital art. It's incredible what it can do, but I have found that it has sped up my workflow, especially for when I retouch my images. And we're gonna dive through five examples on how you can utilize it as well. So first off, where do you get this? Because it's not in the regular Photoshop app. So if you have Adobe, the photography plan or the plan where you have all the apps like I do it's not the regular Photoshop app you have to get the Photoshop beta it doesn't cost anything extra if you already have a plan you just have to go download it and utilize that Photoshop application to use the generative fill okay so I came up with five specific real estate photography examples that I constantly come across on the daily and how this has sped up my workflow immensely so thankful for this new feature and this first one is a classic where you have your camera in the mirror in this particular bathroom it's really small this is the master bath and even though I did a shot from here as well I feel like this angle was better especially because it showcased where it is in relation to the bedroom but my point being that I was gonna get in the mirror regardless I crouched down real quick as I took the photos which was five auto exposure bracket photos and here's the final image after doing my preset so obviously we don't want to leave that and the old method would have been you know you can use J which is the clone stamp tool kind of start getting rid of it but you can see like it starts to get kind of messy looking and especially because we have all these shadow textures. So that might not be the best. Another option would be hitting S for clone stamp. Same thing, clone some of the area. This could probably be the method that would work best. But again, in this situation, it's much easier because there's nothing behind it other than the shadow textures. But sometimes you're not that lucky and you have crazy backgrounds behind the camera that really won't work too well and it's just hard to replicate it. So this is where generative fill comes in. First, you can see we have our little bar down here. So what I'm gonna do is hit L for the lasso tool. And this is another great thing. You don't have to do a really accurate selection. I'm just gonna go highlight this whole area around the camera. As you can see, not perfect whatsoever. Now we get this little box with a bunch of commands. So you're just gonna click on generative fill. You don't have to put remove or anything like that. I found that simply hitting enter, letting it start doing its thing, it automatically knows that, okay, we wanna remove this and just replace it with the background. And the results are great. <laughs> and this is the next best thing. You don't only get one option, you get multiple multiple options, three options to be exact, that it generated. So we can see this is the area we're looking at. If I click on version number two, version number three, so I can kind of see which one fits best or I can regenerate again if I wanted to do more specific commands, like if it didn't hit it the first time. But I think the first one worked out fine. You know, you can turn off the layer and you can see what it's doing. Looks great. There's a little bit of a shadow thing right here. So what I'm gonna do is flatten the image. I'm just being extra fine tuned right here, but just for example's sake. There you go, right there. You would not know there was a camera camera right there and it's just been a world of a difference. Anytime I have my camera in the mirror it makes it so much easier to move. And so then you just find your image, hit save, good to go. That's how I do it. I don't open the files from Lightroom as a TIFF file, way too big of file sizes for as many as I'm doing. I export them from Lightroom after they're edited and I retouch them in Photoshop. That's my process. And then I save it as a high quality JPEG. Has worked for me for years, not looking to change that. So now onto the next one, which is another very common example, and that is cables. Cables everywhere, constantly. And realtors, which I agree that they always want it to look clean, not cluttered. And obviously they try and do their best job with that, but sometimes you can't avoid it. And in this case, this person works from home. It's a nice office, but the first thing I see immediately is this cable here and all these on here. So this would be a pain to clean up with the clone stamp tool going from here and there. And already you can see it's kind of messing up whatever's in the background. So that's not gonna work, not at all. So what we're gonna do again is hit L for lasso. And I'm just gonna literally go, all the way around this. I might just do this whole thing, see how it does in one take. So just going all around it, following this cable. Hopefully it understands. I'm just trying to remove this and back we go. Okay, wow, that seems very complicated. So we'll just see if it hits it first try. Maybe the only thing that adds time is simply just waiting for it to do it, but I think it's still faster because there you go. Let's see. So it gave us a couple options. If I turn it off, turn it on. So I did select the shadow I just realized, which is totally fine. Look at that. If I turn this off, it looks seamless. So all I have to do is just you know flatten that and then maybe just clone this myself. Like there and there. Boom, already we removed that cable. So let's do this other one. It, it excites me because this has sped up my workflow 
by so much. Some of you probably do way more volume than I do. I only do like three to five homes a week and some of y'all might be doing that a day. So that is a lot of editing. Doing this, like I said, speeds it up and makes it more accurate and just love that so much. Let's see how it does on this one because it's even going over the frame of the desk and everything. So it did something kind of funny right there, but I don't think anyone's gonna notice that. In my opinion, it's another tool in the toolkit to produce better work. It's not gonna replace us. I don't think it's ever gonna replace everything that we're doing, just gonna make our jobs easier. And that is something I'm a huge fan of. Again, we can see the other versions, but yeah, that one, that one's good right there. So let's see how it does on this one. I'm not gonna finish the whole photo because you get the idea, but I love just how I don't have to be super accurate with this. I can just quickly select the area and it just knows. And then while I'm waiting for it, I'm always looking at the rest of the image, like what I could clean up. And yeah, I think this definitely helps us make better photos. You gotta be careful that it's not creating new things, but that right there, look, that looks really good. I'm gonna flatten this image again. I'm flattening it so I can actually modify it. Even if we stop right there, here's where we started and here's where we finished in just a couple of clicks. Amazing. That would have been so tedious. I would have had to send that to another editor because if I had to literally do that myself, it probably would have taken me 30 minutes, 45 minutes, probably not great results. So just the fact that we can do that now is awesome. And before getting into the next topic, I wanted to showcase a new battery that I just got sent from FJ Dynamics. I really like the idea of featuring products like I've been doing in the past couple of videos that I think are valuable to me, which means it'd be valuable to you guys. And this right here is a 6700 milliamp V-mount battery that is actually multi-use. Usually you use V-mount batteries for like cinema cameras, powering lighting. In this case, that's exactly what it was doing. This is one of my lights for my YouTube set and I just didn't have it charged, but I wanted to film. So this was perfect. And the thing I like about this one is it's multi-use because it can charge other things because it has a type C connection right here. So you can charge your daily items essentially using this like a massive power power bank, but the ability to use this as a V-mount as well. It charges through here, which is really great because I don't have to get one of those other D-tap cables to charge it every time. The battery indicator lasts a long time, charge that battery, no problem. You can use it to charge your phone, computer, other equipment like powering lights, especially if it has a V-mount attachment. And of course it has the D-tap connection here anyway. So honestly, really impressed. This is probably gonna be something that I'm just gonna throw in my bag charged because there's so many times where I'm gonna fly my drone, my phone's about to die, really have to hurry up or just charge things and it would be great to have some sort of power brick solution for anything I need just in my bag because it's a really small form factor and packs a punch. Definitely recommend, I'll have it linked down below if y'all are interested. Not paid to say this, they just sent it to me free of charge and wanted to showcase it. Okay, back to the video. Next example is grass replacement. So I found that this can retouch grass a lot more accurately. Normally I would use clone stamp and do this, but then depending on your feathering, things like that, sometimes you might get good results, but to me, it honestly just doesn't look the same. And I hate using grass replacements. I just feel like it looks so fake, looks like it's turf. Just not a good example at all of like what that grass looks like. So again, doing this, just letting Photoshop do its thing. I feel like it takes parts of the areas and actually creates a new section that's a lot more realistic in my opinion. I like this result much better. If you wanna keep doing it your way, that's cool, but this way I just think it just works a lot more accurate. Like there we go, really seamless, looks really nice. Again, for my type of workflow, I don't retouch all of this stuff. Like I don't fix every single grass to where it looks perfect. Unless the agent asks me to, I am always more on the realistic side. As you can see, this is just what the sky really was. I think that looks fine to me. That's my personal point of view. I just think everything is like super fake nowadays. That's just why. I'd rather it look as real as possible. Let's say that they wanted this whole section to be cleaned up. Let's see how that would work. That, that one's really good right there. We can turn these off. Not over the top, but looks really good. This is another example. The pool cleaner is always in the pool whenever we're, we're doing our shoots, right? So just come over here, loosely, not accurately selecting it like I normally would have to, or go step by step with the clone stamp tool. Now I kind of think about things like, wait, do I really have to spend that extra five, 10 minutes out of shoot moving these things, for example, if we had to get the pool cleaner out or can I honestly just remove it in editing really easily with this feature now? Again, it just has made cleaning up photos so much easier. Some of these things like this one could probably be cloned out really easy with the clone stamp tool, but I just feel like these results are so much more accurate and that's why I still pretty much utilize this now entirely. Yeah, looks good. Turning all these off, this is what we had before and after. Really cleaned up, I'm happy with that. And if you're a real estate photographer, videographer and you're getting value out of this video, you should really consider joining my community. It's 
an online community that I started for real estate photographers, videographers, photographers in general, where you get access to a private Discord group with a bunch of members that are probably in the same position like you, trying to start their businesses, grow their businesses. So much good conversation going on there, blown away by the feedback. You also get access to an exclusive behind the scenes video series where I take you on actual job shoots, showcase shots that I'm doing, what I'm thinking about in the actual shoot, super raw and uncut, unlike the videos here on YouTube. And lastly, you get a digital welcome pack with a bunch of assets that I use constantly in my business. Lightroom presets, video LUTs, some sky replacements, some audio effects, all just for the price of $5 per month. So if you're interested, make sure to head to the link in description. And my last major real estate photo example is this one. It's always trash day whenever you go take photos and you do aerial shots. It always is, just never fails. And so for me in this case, this is the home that we were highlighting. I just used the brush tool at a really low size and I just highlight the area of where the home is. And then I send one version like this and one without and realtors really like that. So this is the home that we're highlighting. Obviously we're highlighting that there's a cul-de-sac and that there's a little park over here. So there's a lot that this image showcases, but obviously I'm not gonna deliver it like this. So again, I could spend the time and sometimes it is pretty accurate doing that. Like, see that didn't really work too well right there, especially right here. Again, this is where the generative fill works so great. I'm gonna try something here. I'm gonna see if I can remove these all at once. I'm hitting the shift key right now. We're about to both learn something together and see how that works. I wonder if we could do this all at the same time. This could totally fail. <laughs> but again, speed. So I'm holding shift right now while I'm doing this, basically selecting and adding a new selection to all of these. Let's see if it cleans it up in one hit because that would be so awesome. For this example, I was gonna go one by one. So I wonder if it's gonna work. Okay, so turning this off and on. Yep, yep. That, well, that could, that kind of turned out a little funny. That one did too. And all the ones on the cul-de-sac essentially came out pretty reasonable. Let's see the other example. So turning it off and on, looking at every single spot. Honestly, that was pretty good. So I'm gonna flatten it and I can just use the clone stamp to retouch that spot. So quick and easy. And lastly, just because there's my car right there, I'd rather have no cars just because. It'd just be again cleaned up. Generative fill again. That's probably gonna remove it, no problem. Utilizing this for drone shots, like I said, I feel like it's always trash day every time I go. Obviously you don't wanna showcase or have trash cans anywhere in your shot. That's not good. Yeah, super easy to clean those up. Those are my four main examples. This fifth one is another feature of generative AI where it's generative expand. This is a super cool feature. Now this photo was originally this one. This was in Galveston, Texas. I had to shoot a property out there, got there a little early. So I did some really cool sunrise, morning light type of shots. And I love flat lay directly down perspectives for drone shots, especially if the landscape works for that. So this is a cool image. I really want to utilize generative fill to its maximum potential. And I created this image. So it looks really cool. But here's my problem. Like while I love this image, I feel like this is not a photograph. It's more in the digital art space to me. Now, when I posted this, no one really knows that. Like this could totally be a real place in Galveston. You know, all I did was expand this area to remove the street. And I moved this surfer guy over here. And then I added a surfboard. He did have a surfboard, but he couldn't see it. I was trying to get that shot. Symmetry and everything lining up. I loved it. I love this image, but I don't know how I feel about it in the sense of like, wow, this is my work because it's like, it is like 80%, 70% real, but the rest is like AI generated. So I don't know how I feel about that. I just want to know your takes on that. Like, is it totally in the space of digital art now, not a photograph, or is it an enhanced photo? Anyway, this is the next big feature. So let's say that I wish that this was like a landscape image or I wanted to make it instead of like cropping the image, like, okay, well, I guess that's all I can do. Like I'm gonna have to crop into it. You can expand this. So I have it on a 16 by nine aspect ratio and I want it to be in the center and I just want this to be generated. So I'm gonna crop it like that. So now that I made the canvas the right size, this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna go over here to the rectangular marquee tool and we're just gonna select a little bit of the inside of the whole photo. So what I mean is like, we're leaving a little bit of the edges on the outside because we want it to merge those really fluidly, not like have a harsh cut at the edge of the photo. So now what we have to do is invert it. So I'm gonna go right down here to the invert selection and now it has the two areas we need to generate selected. So we're just gonna hit generative fill. I'm not gonna give it any sort of prompts. I'm just gonna let it analyze the photo and expand it and see what we come up with. So obviously this is a way bigger image, so it's taking a little bit longer to generate, but let's see the result. That's pretty awesome. <laughs> wow, there's a little bit of like a edge that it didn't fully retouch, but just crop that in slightly. And wow, that looks so cool. Here's the other thing. Like, let's say I was like, wow, this is cool. I wanted to see what else it could generate. You can go to the other options right here and see like, wow, that, that's pretty fluid right there too. Or this one, this third option where it actually generated more waves and then another path. I still think the first one is like probably the best 
best one. But regardless, like, wow. This is just gonna open up so many capabilities. And so that's that's crazy. That's a little bonus feature. I don't know how you would realize that in real estate, but you know, if you're a real estate photographer, you probably do some sort of personal photography or things like that. That has been something really cool to either use for new images I shoot or revisit other ones and just kind of see what it makes it or to change aspect ratios. If I shot something landscape and I wanted it to be expanded to be vertical or vice versa, like in this case. So yeah, that's really cool. So that's pretty much it. Those are my top scenarios on how I've been using generative fill AI to speed up my workflow and retouching my real estate photography images constantly. Because as I get my photos back from my editor, I then go through them and then I just kind of highlight which ones I need to retouch. And it's just made the process so much easier and I'm so happy with that. There are two major drawbacks that essentially I've noticed. And the first one being that they say that it's only for personal use. So you can't use generative fill for commercial use in the setting that you can't generate images. So if I were to select something and be like flower bed or vase or just have it generate things that aren't in that scene, you technically can't do that, which is a bummer. I wish you could because I feel like you might be able to in the future. There's probably gonna be like a lot of like restrictions around that. That's one thing, but I don't think that there is an issue to use it to remove things because I would utilize just the other tools anyway. So I'm just getting to the same result, but faster and easier. And the second thing is that you can't get the same results each time. So if you generate one section, but then you have another angle of that photo and you do the same thing, you're probably not gonna get the same result, whether it was like the grass replacement or just maybe uh, the cars that you're removing in the aerial shot. So I wish there was a way to control that. Like if you generated a certain section and then you go to another photo, like you could generate that same perspective or something like that. Those are the two major things. Other than that, like I said, it sped up my workflow so much. Basically as I'm uploading photos or waiting on anything, I can knock that out in like five, 10 minutes. And it just, like I said, sped everything up. And so final thoughts, I know when this came out and all of the AI stuff that's constantly coming out right now. I feel like there's a lot of fear around the fact that like whether you're involved as like a graphic designer, photographer, editor, everyone's gonna be losing their job now to AI. And it's like, I don't know how it's gonna be played out in the next few years, five years, like how big of a role or impact that's gonna make on us. I feel like it will have a big impact on us creators. But for the meantime, I'm looking at it as like new tools to just add into the toolkit that are gonna make everything much easier for us. In this case, like in the last video, if you missed it, I used chat GPT to help generate my voice over script for the branded bio video we made. And in this case, Photoshop's new generative fill has made editing easier. So I'm constantly just looking at these improvements as just new things to make our lives easier from an editing perspective or whatever it is, I think you should do the same and not fear it, just make the best of it. And I'm even contemplating the fact that like, if we get so good with this Photoshop AI stuff that we can control it to where we can kind of expect the results we're gonna get is to where we can maybe like offer it as an add-on service in the future, like advanced, AI editing add-on for maybe adding things if they add commercial use to it or just really high-end retouching. That might be something worth looking into as well. But that's pretty much it for this video. Leave a like if you enjoyed, comment down your thoughts, subscribe if you haven't already. I would love for you guys to be part of the channel and I'll see you guys in the next video. See ya.